I'm here discussing uh, the uh, influence of blood pressure at the time of coronary revascularization and its effect on outcomes in patients who were in the FREEDOM trial, which was a trial comparing uh, percutaneous coronary intervention, PCI, with bypass. The goal of the research was uh, to determine what cutoffs or categories of blood pressure were associated with mo the most favorable outcomes in the trial. And remember, we had two arms. One was the PCI arm, one was the cabbage arm, and whether blood pressure influenced the comparison of the two. In the overall trial, uh, bypass was, was found to be superior to PCI for diabetic patients with multi-vessel disease. Really wanted to get granular about the medical risk factors, so we looked into the major risk factors, LDL, cholesterol, glycemic control, and blood pressure. We're reporting at this meeting on the blood pressure findings. We found that the baseline systolic blood pressure that you have, a patient has when they go into a procedure um, uh, is probably, the optimal blood pressure is probably not as low as we had traditionally thought. So we have cutoffs now. The guidelines suggest that blood, systolic blood pressure should be less than 140 millimeters of mercury. So we tested that category compared to a slightly elevated blood pressure of 140 to 160 at the time of the procedure. And then, of course, out of control blood pressure, which we define as greater than 160. The reason we picked 140 to 160 is because we hypothesized that for patients having bypass, that they may need a higher perfusion pressure to keep their grafts open and uh, to enjoy the greatest benefit from bypass. So it was a hypothesis that we had and we wanted to test in the trial. What we found, in fact, was yes, for the PCI patients, they tended to respond most favorably to a blood pressure less than 140. So that would be like your stable medical patients. But for bypass patients who are having surgery and have these new grafts in place, uh, and have a challenging clinical course in that first seven days, we found that the optimal blood pressure actually was 140 to 160. And, and that we were, uh, we found of course that many of our patients, more than half, had a blood pressure less than 140 and some of them a lot less than that because we're driving blood pressure low because everybody thinks low blood pressure is associated with best outcomes. What we found is these marginally elevated blood pressures were actually associated with the lowest rates of major adverse events and the lowest rates of mortality. Well, I think what it tells us, first of all, and we have a lot of data to suggest that too low is bad. So less than 120 or 130 on medications is probably too low. It also suggests that maybe we should be more liberal at the time of surgery with regards to our medications. And having a blood pressure in that 140 to 160 range uh, should not, first of all, prevent surgery or delay surgery, but in fact it may be associated with the best outcomes. This needs to be tested prospectively, but we used an analysis that has been used in many other trials, and they have stood the test of time. Those other analyses have been proven in later randomized trials to show that you know, optimizing blood pressure uh, is usually in that 130, 140 range for a non-bypass patient. We may find something equally as important in patients having bypass. Absolutely. So I think 160 appears to be a threshold for surgery. A greater than 160 is associated with the worst outcomes. And I don't think it should be any less than 130 to 140 on medications. Uh, but again, if a patient presents with 140 to 160, I think they should go ahead and have surgery. And then in the long term, we can entertain meeting the 140 target. But in that periprocedural period, very high risk period for bypass patients. If they get through that first period, they do very, very well. That first 30 days is key. And what happens in that first 30 days has implications for the next five years. Things that delay them, obviously, there's a, a slightly increased risk of mortality around the surgical procedure, uh, particularly in people who've had a recent heart attack. Uh, and then they have more strokes. So all of the strokes, and we found more strokes overall in freedom in the bypass group. It's about a doubling of the stroke rate. And all of those strokes tend to happen in the first 30 days, so they're periprocedural events. And so, of course, blood pressure is linked to stroke, but in that first 30 days, it may be too low of a blood pressure linked to stroke as opposed to this marginally elevated 140 to 160 seems to be a sweet spot for these patients.